Welcome geometry students. Today we're going to talk about the area of regular polygons, which is section 10.3. In this section, the basic principle of regular, a regular shape, is that it has all sides and all angles equal. Well, that's something we've talked about before, but that's just a quick review of what a regular polygon is. So the premise of a regular polygon. Well, I hope one thing that you notice about a regular polygon is when you draw a circle around it, this is a circumscribed because it's going around. Okay, all the vertices touch, and then you can create the center of the polygon is also going to be the center of the circle. So what is that distance from the edge of the circle to the center? That is known as the radius. Okay, now if I draw all the radiuses, which I already did, you'll see that it, it creates these shapes here with the side, and these are triangles, obviously, okay? So that's just a hint on what our formula is gonna look like once it's all put together. Now the other thing that you wanna know, you're gonna wanna know is this distance, or this part here, which we already labeled, sorry, this is the center. This distance in blue, this is a very important distance, and why? Because this is the height of a triangle. Okay, so as we divided up the regular uh, hexagon into the uh, triangles, we could find the height of the triangle and then the side, which I'm gonna highlight in just a second for you. I'm gonna do that in pink. This would be the side. With the side and the height, you could easily find the area of one of those triangles. This height has a special name. It's called the apothem. Okay, now, so, with the apothem, we could find uh, the area of one of those triangles, and then we could just multiply by the number of those triangles to find the area. That's one way to do it. An easier way to do it is as, as such. We do one half the perimeter, one half times the perimeter, perimeter, sorry, times the apothem. Now, why the perimeter? Well, the perimeter will tell us the sum of the sides of these triangles. So this, all these distances here tell us the sides, all the sides of the triangle. So if we multiply this, no, the number of sides, the amount of sides, the lengths of the sides, all together, times the apothem, we're going to get the all those triangles added together so we it's kind of combining two steps for us that's essentially what it's doing it's a little shortcut okay so let's go ahead and apply it and see what it looks like the regular hexagon shown has an apothem equal to five radical three units find its area okay so this is a regular hexagon so there's six sides and we're given this information now one thing you should know is if we do the 360, which is how many degrees there are in a circle, if you were to draw a circle around this uh, shape, 360 degrees. If we were to divide that by the central angle here, we could figure out that the angle of one of these triangles drawn, let me erase this so you can see what I'm talking about. We could figure out that one of these triangles, this angle right here is 60 degrees. Because these sides have to be equal because it's a radius and by definition of a regular polygon, these also need to be 60 degrees because it's an isosceles triangle. So this is an equilateral triangle. Now, if we split this with its apothem, and that's 90 degrees, now this becomes 30 degrees and we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So hexagons, regular hexagons create 30, 60, 90 triangles. This problem gives you a little bit more information than you need. You could calculate that this is five here, but knowing that this is the short side and this is the medium side of a 30, 60, 90 triangle, that's kind of important on being able to understand that and recognize that, okay? Regardless, we need to get back to the problem, which is the apothem equals the one half times the perimeter. And we're gonna abbreviate perimeter. I'm gonna erase this real quick. I'm gonna abbreviate with big P as it normally is times the apothem, which we'll call A. So let's start with the easiest part. The, uh, the, the perimeter seems like it's gonna be pretty easy. Because this was already given as five, which again, we can calculate with the properties of uh, 30, 60, 90 triangles, 
this is also going to be 5. So if that's 5 and that's 5, that means this distance is 10, which means this is 10, and this is 10, and so on and so forth. So my perimeter is going to be 10 times 6, which is 60. Change this to green, because that's what I was using, 1 half. So I have 1 half times 60 so far. I've already figured out, that's the ugliest 2 I've ever seen. I've already figured out that my printer is 60. Now I need to know what the apothem is. And I already know it. It already tells me that my apothem is 5 radical 3. It's 5 radical 3. My radius is something else. My radius ends up being 10 by either using the properties of um, 369 triangle or understanding that's an equilateral triangle. But my apothem is 5 radical 3. So I'm going to multiply this by 5 radical 3. I multiply this all together. First, I'm going to do 1 half times 60. I always like multiplying my fractions times my biggest number first just so I have something easier to work with. So I do area equals 1 half times 60. That's going to be 30 times 5 radical 3. 30 times 5 is 150 radical 3 units squared. And I can leave it like that. I encourage my geometry students to leave it like that. I don't want them to become too reliant on a calculator. It is a tool, not a crutch. Example 2. Here we have an octagon. Now, please know I rounded these sides here, but it will still give you something that's very close, okay? But just for simplicity's sake, I rounded it to 13. So here we have a regular octagon. It doesn't say it, but we know it. How? Well, take a look. We're given that all these sides are the same distance. So we know all those sides have length of 10, okay? We're given that the radius, this is the radius, is 13. What do we need to know? Well, we need to know to find the area, and it is a regular shape. We need to know the perimeter, and we need to know the apothem. The perimeter should be easy enough. It's 10, and there's eight sides, so we know it's going to be 80. I'm going to write that out just in case you didn't get that, okay? So perimeter is equal to 10 times 8, okay? The number of sides times side length, and that equals perimeter. Okay, so I have 80 times the apothem. Now I need to find the apothem, and this is the, this is the juicy geometry part, okay? So the apothem is this distance here, and I know it splits it into two equal parts because it's a regular shape, and I know it's 90 degrees. So if I split this into two equal parts, what does that mean for this triangle? Well, that makes this distance 5. Why? Well, if that this whole distance for the side is 10, then half of it is 5. Now I can easily find the height, or excuse me, the apothem, which is the height of that triangle, by doing either Pythagorean theorem, 13 squared equals 5 squared plus the apothem squared, or by recognizing that this is my, I'm sorry, I struggled with my twos, or recognizing that this is another automatic triangle, which is 5, 12, 13 triangle. So I know my apothem is 12. And again, I know this is, this is rounded, okay? For those who are saying, oh, it's not exactly 13, it's 13.06 something something, I understand that. I'm just rounding for simplicity's sake, okay? So... I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. Area equals 1 half times 80 times the apothem, which is 12. Now, the complaint of this, me rounding this, sometimes you'll need to use trigonometry to find the missing apothem or find the missing radius, and you may need to use trigonometry. Okay, So I do want to warn you that these problems can get very involved very quickly, so don't forget your trigonometry. Remember that trigonometry is not going away. That was a free public service announcement. Now we're going to go ahead and continue this problem. So we have 1 half times 80 times 12. I'm going to do 1 half times 80 because I like working with smaller numbers. So now I have 40 times 12. Uh, that should be fairly decent to do. I know 12 times 4 is 48. So I just add a 0 onto the end. I get 480 units squared. Okay, done with example 2. We only have one more. Hang in there. Example three, the area of a square is 64 centimeters squared. The square is circumscribed by a circle. What is the radius of the circle? Okay, so how do I find this? Well, the first thing you need to understand 
is a square has, it's kind of like a rectangle, it is a rectangle. So I know, as, but it has two equal sides. So I know that it's the length times width. But since the square has two equal sides, we'll call it S and S, I know it's equal to S times S or S squared. Okay, and some of you may recognize this as the formula for an area of a square if you remember that, okay? Now I know that the area of the square is 64, so I need to solve for my missing side of the square. I'm starting with the information it gives. Don't get lost in, oh, I, I need to be worried about the circle. No, start with what it gives you, okay, and then go from there. Problems are clues. They give you clues and you just need to piece them together and then solve your problem. To undo this squared, this s squared, I need to do the opposite of squaring, which is taking the square root. So once I do that, I get eight equals s. I'm only concerned about the positive square root of 64, not the negative, because we're dealing with distances. So I know s equals eight. Okay. Now, if I know s equals eight, I have some more work to do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show that we can draw another triangle, okay? So with another triangle, I'm gonna draw, complete the side here, okay? I have another triangle here, and I know that a square's diagonals are perpendicular. So I have a very interesting, and the reason why they're perpendicular is because it's a rhombus also. So I have an interesting case where this is R, this is R, okay? So it's an isosceles triangle also, and I hope you guys recognize this. If this is 90, this angle here, then that means this has to be 45, and this has to be 45 degrees. This is, with squares, you've got to be prepared for 45, 45, 90 triangles. So don't forget those rules also, okay? We could either use trig or take what we remember of 30, 45, 45, 90 triangles. So with 45, 45, 90, keep in mind if this was x and this was x, our hypotenuse was x times radical two. So if we're given our hypotenuse this time though, let me redraw this triangle as demonstrated. Okay, so if I redraw this, sorry, user error here. I'm not a black belt in notability. I'm just, I'm just uh, a, a Joe tryhard. So I know this is eight, and I'm trying to get to this uh, missing side here. So if I multiply by radical two to get to the hypotenuse, then I divide by radical two to get to the shorter side. So I need to do eight divided by radical two. I need to rationalize the denominator. I hope you guys remember how to do this. Essentially, as a quick recap, we need to multiply by one, which this is equal to one because it's square root of two divided by square root of two. I get eight radical two, and the whole point was to get this denominator not to have a radical. And of course, we reduce after this. We get four radical two, and that should be our radius, four radical two. So in this case, we went backwards using what we understood of area to find a missing value. And we could further find the apothem if we wanted to. The apothem would be this distance right here. But for, for squares, it's really easy. It's only half the side, so it's four. Okay, so the apothem of a square is super easy to find. Or you could use more triangle relationships and trig, but it's only going to be half the side. And our radius is four radical two. Hope this was enlightening and I will see you next time.